one thing that you've kind of really liked about the, the offense in the first place, so what's one thing you might focus on during the bye week here? Well, I think the thing we're always working to improve on is the turnovers. Um, you know, we got to continue to, <clears throat> you know, make sure we secure it. We had two last week that, you know, those are game-changing plays. You know, so that's something that we definitely are, are going to focus on. Um, you know, and then I think one of the things I do like is just some of the diversity we have um, in terms of, you know, our go-to guys, who, who we have the ability to get the ball to. We're using a lot of different players. Um, and, you know, a lot of guys have catches. A lot of guys have, have um, runs. You know, you know there's, the ball's being spread around. That's something that I like. How much uh, just having four regular season games, you be able to figure out what your offense is as opposed to the preseason or the offseason workouts? Just live combat and full, full speed. Is yeah, it's it's really valuable because in in the preseason we don't get our we don't get to play our guys. You know, our um, you know Matthew's not playing with the line, the receivers, and all those guys were were never together. So, you know, hoping to that that you can you know that you can start fast, that you can have a start fast to the season. But <clears throat> you know, offense does take time. Uh, but I just you know I like the fact that you know how each and every game I think we've gotten a little bit better, and uh, you know you you never have everything fixed. You're always trying to you know to to correct things, and uh, it's a work in progress. How valuable is it just to the guy who's playing and then being able to evaluate the two things? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we're that's that's our business. You know, we're an evaluation business, and we're doing it. You know, every practice that we have, every game that we have, and we're trying to, um, you know, make sure that we're that we're staying on top of the little things and coaching the little details. And um, I think our our guys are coming through for us. Beyond the, beyond the turnovers, just more consistency in the. Yeah, you know, I think we talked, uh, you know, I, I don't know who I'm talking to on that press conference on the phone, but, you know, <laughs> whoever I was talking to, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, we were kind of one guy away and, um, you know, and, you know, we had 10, 11 guys doing doing a pretty good job and we needed you know, all 11 working together. And I think you could see that last week. You know, I think we did a much better job in the run game. You know, we averaged over five yards a rush in that game. And, um, <clears throat> you know, so I, I thought our guys did a really good job of, you know, taking the message and really and really working on it. And, you know, I like the mix that we were able to have because of it. it seems like you've got some good play on guys on the interior there. I'm curious specifically what you've seen with, um, with Ragnar and Glasgow. It seems like those guys have played. Yeah, I really like the way all five of them are, are playing together. Uh, they've, they've done a great job. Um, you know, I mean, we went two weeks without a sack against really some quality opponents with some quality edge rushers. So, I mean, that's a really, uh, you know, that's a really a you know feather in their cap for those guys. But um, it, it takes the whole group. You know, um, you know, I kind of talk about the line because of how well that they played, and you know, Crosby stepped in and did a great job for us in that during that time as well. But you know, it's it's the guys getting open on time, it's the quarterback getting the ball, getting the ball out on time as well. Um, it's moving the protections around, and uh, I think that the guys were able to handle that and did a great job with it. Rego had a pretty good season. It seemed like a, a guard, but he's been. It seems really good at center. I'm just curious what it is about his game or his body or whatever that, that really lends itself to this. Well, I, I mean, he, you know, he has those leadership qualities about him, and um, I, I think he's he's a good leader. I think he's he's smart in terms of being able to you know to run the offense for us from the center point, and and you know him and and uh, Matthew work really well together, and so you know we're, we're having Frank doing as much as he can, and obviously the quarterback always has Trump, and um, he's just doing a good job of running it for us. I had a question about Matthew. It's quarter point in the season, and these things may you know, change. But one of the stats he's, he's leading is air yards per attempt. So throwing longer per attempt than, than anybody in the league. It's not, I guess, what we te tend to think of with the West Coast offense. Is that you just kind of play into to his strengths and, and him, him finding his strengths within your scheme? Um, yeah, probably a little bit of both. You know, I think um, I think there's things that we're that we're trying to do. You know, I like I like our group of you know of skilled players that we have, and um, trying to find different ways to get them the ball, really all over the field. But um, with when you have a running game the way that we are hoping to have, and like we had last week, then it lends itself to be able to have opportunities down the field, and that's what we're you know that's what we're trying to do. When we you know I think I talked about it one of the first weeks that we're trying to be explosive in our past game, and um, that's the way to do it. Is the yards per attempt stat? Do I've heard some people say that's one of the more important indicators because the higher it is, the more you'll be able to dictate it. Means you're throwing when you want to throw, not when you have to throw. Um. I'm not exactly sure how I would rate the stat, but I mean it's important to, to push the ball down the field, no question. Um, you know, because sometimes when I mean it's it's really hard in this league to you know to get five yards, five yards, five yards, five yards, and put that many plays together to be able to you know to finish with a touchdown. And um, I, mean, I mean your percentages go way up to score points when you have an explosive play uh, in the drive, and so um, it's critical to be able to try to push the ball down the field. Just I guess generally speaking, how do you think Stafford's playing the first in the first quarter? 
his handle on the offense? Well, I mean, gutty performance this last week. You know, he was um, he he just really did a phenomenal job of running the offense for us and then you know fighting through the things that he was that he was working with um and just i mean his toughness is is unquestioned and um you know i he thought he i thought he was kind of a warriorish mentality in that game um he you know he played he played really well he's played, playing really well um you know we have two turnovers you know um in interceptions and and we did lose a fumble as well so you know that's something that we're still working to to make sure that we can correct stats are a weird thing Right. So what, what are the metrics, I guess, that, that you look at, you know, a game or a course of season that are important that are indicative of like, success or not? Wins. Are, are that's that's I mean wins those, you know I mean yeah. I mean it's 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 good to be you know to be high in those you know in all the areas I mean we want to be good in the red zone we want to be good on third down we want to run the football we want to be explosive you know those are things that we want to be able to do but bottom line is is you know if you if if you win you know two to zero or you know you win fifty one to you know to to forty five it, it doesn't matter it's just a matter the the statistic that matters is winning. Let's carry on the last couple weeks with Cooper he can if needed and asked to be kind of that bell cow kind of back 26 20 carries and especially last week did really well with it. Yeah, I thought last week was his best game that he's played for us and you know <clears throat> and I'm saying since I've been here yeah. um, he was he was very decisive with his runs. He was he was running with a physical style and uh, you know he was he was really doing a good job of trying to get you know get the 4 yards, you know, so to speak that you're looking for and then whatever else that he can get and uh, I thought he was very like I said very decisive and very yeah. physical. Yeah. How do you get guys like Hall and McKissick to play limited roles and give you big time protection? Well, I mean, it's it's huge. You know, you're always looking for explosive playmakers. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think both of those guys are are that way. You know, they're both very explosive, and um, you know, you, you have to be able to you know find ways to get the ball in those guys' hands. But <clears throat> you know, we have um, also uh, Marvin Kenny and TJ and Logan and uh, and uh, Jesse James and all, you know a lot of guys to be able to try to get. It, and it's a it's a good problem to have right now. Uh, with, with Hawkinson, <clears throat> the first game, the touchdown, in the last game, you know, limited, more limited production in the middle. I'm just curious what you thought of his performance and maybe how much of the limited production there in a couple of games maybe had to do with some blocking assignments. Yeah, um, you know, he had kind of had a really big breakout game, his, his first game, and then, you know, um, probably a little inconsistent in the next couple of games, and um, he, he did much better in this, you know, in the fourth game. So, uh, you know, it's going to be some of the growing pains as, you know, as a young player, uh, but we, we love what he's doing, and we're going to continue to count on him to, to come through for us. And I'm not sure what you can say about the injury that he's going to, but what concern do you have, you know, just with the health and his health this week? Um, <clears throat> really, no concerns. I mean, the, you know, the the medical staff and those guys are going to take care of that. And when they say he's good to go, then he's he then he's good to go. Now you weren't around Kenny his first couple of years. <clears throat> just what have you seen from him? And you know, when, when guys get into their third years, not just the route concepts, understanding what defenses want to do. Him is is that part where he's kind of maybe taking the next step? Yeah, I think I think Kenny's doing a nice job. Um, you know, he's he's made a few really uh, big contested catches for us. You know, I think. Um, that that catch that he made, I mean, it was a really tight window that that uh, Matthew was able to throw that ball in. But you know, there's a lot of traffic, and that yeah. ball is going through a lot of stuff to be able to have that focus and be able to make that play. So that was a that was a big play for us as well. Uh, but but I do I do see him improving. Uh, I see you know. One, you know, it's kind of hard to measure since I wasn't here before, but it's kind of hard to measure how much of it is that he's just being able to understand what we're asking him to do and how much of it is that he's, you know, he's improving as the player because I think, you know, those can kind of go together sometimes. And so, um, so I, I really like the, the, you know, the progression that he's going through right now and where he's at for us. You talked about that throw. You, you talked about that throw. You know, you've been around a lot of really great quarters, but sometimes when you watch the film, are you kind of amazed at some of the throws? Even as, but that one, that Matthews, or when you look at it, that window, yeah, so small. Yeah. Do you sit back there and get amazed sometimes at, at some of the windows? Oh, some. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's and not only not only that one. You know, I um, the one of the impressive, more impressive throws that I think he made was the was the one that he threw to Danny on the sideline. In the uh, in the Philly game, where oh, Danny yeah. tapped his toes, but if you just watch the the anticipation of when he's letting go of the ball, the spot that he put it in, you know he's he's getting a little bit of pressure, but when he's letting the ball go, I mean Danny's not even not even close to, and to be able just just the anticipation that that he has, um, the same thing on that throw, you know it's the anticipation, but then you know the accuracy with which he put it in as well. So you know some of those are kind of awe inspiring um, throws and plays. Yeah, you, 
back in and how do you think you guys can still improve there? Well, I think we were doing well, but we turned the ball over two times. You know, we turned it over twice inside inside the 10, and, uh, you know, you're you're going to have issues when you do that. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe they asked you this already, but you guys have a lot of success out of that trips formation, you know, that bunch formation early the other day. Can you just explain why that's tough on defense? You know, what you guys are doing out of that? Well, I mean, we... It was kind of a game plan, it's more of a game plan thing in that game than, I mean, we've used it a little bit, but it was just things that we saw on tape that we wanted to try to take advantage of. And, and we used different players, you know, we were moving JD, but we also had uh, Marvin Hall in there as well and, and moved him and um, don't want to go into all the details, but it ended up being good for us. That was just your script that you yeah. saw something that you yes. to take Yeah. Well, uh, and then you still have to be able to, you know, you can't just do one thing out of it. So you have to try to, you know, come up with more things to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, no. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm, in, last week, the touchdown pass to, to Gallaudet. Um, it's kind of become a, a buzzy thing on, on Twitter. There's like a, some like Olaski and some guys are breaking it down. You can see from the coaches, the all 22. You can see it. Guys, right? right, right, right. Yeah, uh, okay, the I'm one we were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. About. yeah. No, 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 go no, ahead, go ahead. I'm just curious. You're, you're, you're He's got a better one for you. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and what was the question? Your breakdown of that play. I mean, I mean, it's we were just talking a little bit about um, you know those type of plays that Matthew has the ability to do. One, I think it was the anticipation that he had of you know obviously knowing. I mean, there's there's so much trust that you have to have, and he knew exactly where where Kenny was going to be, how he was going to get there, and then the anticipation to throw it, but then also the, um, I don't know, is it called courage or whatever, to, to fit it in there and the accuracy that he that he was able to have to get it in that window. I mean, it's a very highly impressive play. Yeah. What's the better one you had? Uh, you said there's the, the, the Amadola. <clears throat> yeah, so I just talked about, you know, I talked about one of the other ones that I think is really impressive was his anticipation on the throw in the Philly game where he hit Dan Danny on our down. right sideline, the yeah. third down. If you watch when he's letting go of that ball where Danny is and the location that he put it and the time that he let it go, is, I mean, those are impressive plays and sometimes it just looks like a completion. But, um, you know, it, it for us, you know, yeah. it's like – that can't go unnoticed. It's, I mean, it was a pretty big time play. In the, in the Philly game, you had a couple more to, to Marv. Uh, Marv. Yeah, even the one where stuff. he, even the one where he hit Marv on the crosser. You know, they're they're in zero zero pressure, so there's a free guy. Um, he has to know who the free guy is, and it ended up being um, Sandejo coming through the middle and being able to hold him off long enough yeah. to be able to, to make the throw and put it in a location that only he could get it and know where he's going and, the, and how much time he had to be able to get that done. You know, those are all big time plays. I mean, we've seen Stafford do that before, but he's in his first quarter of the season in the new offense. Right. Are you, I mean, depressed, surprised at all by his ability to have his anticipation? Uh, no, I mean, not that. I, I mean, I've been, I've been highly impressed with him as, since I've been here. And I've been very impressed with just, um, <clears throat> I think his, uh, you know, how, how, how much he just really immersed himself into the playbook and learning everything. I think I've said it before, but um, the, the West Coast offense can be really wordy. And, and stepping into the huddle, um, I mean, he's never missed a beat. He's, I mean, he's barely even had to ask for the play twice. And he doesn't stumble over the words. He knows it. So it just tells me how, how committed and, and how much time that he put in to doing that. And I think that's what's, what he showed me, how impressive he is. And then, so when you're able to do that, then you can spend all your time like thinking about the, the other side and what the defense is doing because he knows our stuff. And so he can, he can manipulate the protections. Um, he can worry about you know, the, what the defensive looks are giving him. And then he can have that anticipation and he's not a, not a tick late. It sounds like the intelligence. One thing that's impressive. So really when, impressed. You know, when you were around, you, you, probably, you, you see him on tape, the strong arm and everything else. Yep. But until you come here, you get to know him and yeah. work with him. Is I mean, you kind of, yeah, you, you, I mean, you know some of his um, physical attributes from afar. You know, right. I mean, we always know that he, there was, that he has a, you know, the gunslinger mentality, that he has strong arm, can make basically any throw that he, that he wants to make. Um, he can change his arm angle, make any throw. But it's the other stuff, it's the intangibles that if you're not inside the building that you can't really appreciate and that you really don't know about and you know whether it's the time he spends just studying himself how he how he interacts with his teammates you know um, how important the game is to him all those things you don't know until you know you're here um yeah i mean i, I really like where we're at and uh, it's just you know at the measuring stick in this first quarter poll i mean we we've, we've done good offensively but you know it doesn't mean anything 
And uh, I just said earlier that the bottom line is, is getting the wins. And uh, we have two, and we need a lot more. And uh, so we're going to continue to work to, to be able to get there. This is obviously a big week for self-evaluation. I don't know how deep you guys mm -hmm. are you know, into that, but what's one thing you like about what you're doing on offense and one thing that you really need to you know, fix at this point? I well, I, I said earlier, you know, is, is turnovers is the one thing that we, that we really need to fix is make sure we get that. I mean, last, last week's game changed because of that. And then um, the thing I think that we're doing the best, I think, is just our versatility, you know, with our guys. I mean, there's, uh, you know, if you play us, I think you have to worry about a lot of things. There's a lot of players that we get the ball to. We don't just hone in on one guy. Um, the ball's being shred, spread around to the wideouts, the tight ends, the running backs. And um, I think that makes us better. Defenses were loading the box quite a bit the first three weeks. I'm just curious if you were surprised at all by that. I mean, yeah, they wanted to run the ball coming into the year and everything. But you go out there, I mean, you're seeing a ton of guys. Up right. Up. Did not surprise me. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You just lean on Marvin and he looks more heavier in the Kansas City games. How to handle some of that? Got not in line blocking, but as close to the line blocking. Um, how important, I guess, is, is your higher receivers in, in that role of contributing, I guess, close to the line scrimmage? Well, there, I mean, there are big factors, and really, uh, we talk we talk about it all the time. And RP does a great job with our receivers. That in the run game, um, you know, they're the, they're the guys that really spring the the explosive plays. They're the you know that second level blockers. We were using those guys at the line. I don't know if you guys saw it we ended up the play that was a sack fumble, but if you saw. Um, they got negated because they were all, they they held Kenny. But if you saw Kenny's block, it was a protection. He chipped the end and you know knocked the end down. So we asked those guys to do a lot, and um, they really um, they really love to do it. Um, they don't mind doing the dirty work, and you know that's really impressive from you know those guys that you know usually want to just catch balls. And um, but they're an integral part of the run game, and we really talk about that. When you do use those guys, put them on the inside. That I guess is one way to kind of prevent them from stacking the box just from a personal matching standpoint. Yeah, I mean, just where where they can put their safeties and proximity, it just helps us to be able to get to them and you know and and um, you know try to play more even football, so you know, so to speak, have so that they don't always have the numbers.